up, we've got uh, your first speaker of the day from Celsius Networks, Alex Mashinsky. Where is Alex? There he is. Thanks. Good morning, New York. How many, how many New Yorkers here? Very few. My God, this is, I guess it's good news. All right. How many of you uh, heard of Celsius before? Good. Very few. That's good. You know, that's what we hear, right? So I want to tell you, share with you my uh, thoughts about the industry as well as, uh, um, you know, ex explain some of the things that I think are uh, misnomers in this, in, in the crypto world. Uh, my background is I'm a New Yorker. I've been here for 30 years. Did seven startups as a founder, raised over a billion dollars. Two of the top uh, 10 exits in New York in the last 20 years. Uh, Three billion in exits. Uh, and I'm the inventor of Voice of IP. If you don't believe it, my last name, Google it. You'll check it out. Um, so I've been in, in, in crypto since 2013. I actually looked at Bitcoin in 2010. One of my buddies uh, sent it to me and said, hey, read Satoshi's paper. And I was like, that's the dumbest idea I've ever seen. You know? It's inefficient, it's slow, it's never going to scale, and here we are, you know. So it took me three years to uh, admit that I was totally wrong. But today, um, the crypto assets divided basically into three groups, three families. We have the oldie and goodies, uh, you know, Ethereum and Bitcoin and so on. We have the utility tokens, which I'm going to be mostly focused on. And then obviously you have the security tokens, which a lot of the other speakers here are going to be focused on. Um, Celsius completed a $52 million ICO two months ago. Uh, we did that in less than 14 days. And um, uh, part of, we did it very differently than everybody else. Uh, we focused on the community. We did not take any money from VCs or from uh, large investors. So this was all about building a community. And that's what I'm going to focus on here. So the, the promise of the blockchain, if you think about the blockchain, is to completely redo the pyramid that we all live in, right? Anyone here thinks it doesn't live in a pyramid? And I'm not talking about a pyramid scheme. I'm just talking about a pyramid, right? We all work. We wake up in the morning. We belong to one of these classes, and we are supposed to produce profit. All of us are working to produce profit either for ourselves or for the boss we work for. And he is supposed to deliver profit to his boss, and the guy at the top collects all the value, right? They keep all the value. The beauty of a blockchain in, in the crypto world is that it's completely different, right? You, you are measured by how much contribution you are doing for the, in, for the society, for the community that you're a part of. If you're part of the Ethereum community, the value of the Ethereum community, the price of ETH, is valuing the entire Ether community. If the Ether community is going up, if it's thriving, if it's people are joining it, the price of ETH is going up. If people are leaving it or they're scared like they are right now, the price is going down. Every day, people are measuring it again and again. So we have 700 years of centralization. These pyramids are 700 years old. It's almost like the Egyptian pyramids. And now all of this, any pyramid, which are all, they're all toll collectors, right? All these businesses, the best businesses in the world, are all a guy in the middle, a bank or anyone else, a guy in the middle collects a toll to allow you to do something you want to do. And all of that is going to be replaced with systems that don't have any tolls, right? The, the, the crypto world, the blockchain does not have any tolls. So you've heard the expression that software is eating the world. In my view, the software is eating the pyramids. You heard then the expression open source is eating all software, right? And I'm telling you that decentralization is eating all of that. So decentralization is the tsunami that's coming, right? It's, it's far away, so you don't think it's a big wave. Most people don't even know what I'm talking about, right? But that big wave is going to replace everything we know because decentralization is something that is here to stay. It's something that's going to wash all of these centralized organizations and replace them with decentralized models. So the opportunity for all of you, how many of you are thinking of an ICO or starting a business in the space? Well, what is everybody else? <laughs> you're not from New York. You're not thinking of an ICO. So, 
So if you are, you know, I wanted to share with you what I think is the the bullseye in this industry, right? It's it's your your solution has to uh, support decentralization. If you're fighting that wave, uh, you're not going to get far. So you have to think about: uh, Am I is my solution part of the decentralization wave, or is it resisting decentralization? Do I have token economics? If I'm if I'm creating a token or a coin. Is that token or coin really necessary? Most projects, there's over 2,000 projects out there uh, that raise the money, right? If I rip out the token, everything continues working. So you ask the people, why do you have a token? They're like, oh, I need to raise money. That's not how it works, okay? Your token economics has to be integral part. If you pull out that cog, the entire machine shuts down, right? If you pull out a cylinder out of a car, will it continue running? So it's the same thing here. Your, your token economics has to be perfect. You have to spend more time on token economics than anything else in your business model. And if you don't have it right, it, when you launch, it's just not going to work. And the last piece is all the benefit that, that the uh, blockchain gives us, which is, again, an open ledger, consensus, and immutable uh, platform, right? If you don't know what these words mean, or if you haven't done enough homework on them, go and Google, watch the hundreds of great videos explaining all these things. You have to be an expert at this. The good news is that the experts, like me, are only six to nine months ahead of you. So you could, be, you could catch up and be an expert in no time. And if you have one segment that you know better than anyone else, and you can focus on that, you can build a great billion dollar company like you, you heard from Mo. So to summarize all of this, I really put it in a very simple formula. Guys, you want some coffee or, I mean, this is, what happened? Everybody flew from LA last night? What? Uh... So E equals MC squared. Does anyone know what that stands for? Yes? Somebody. Huh? Einstein's theory. So E must be stand for what? Oh, come on, guys. You're in a, you're in a crypto conference. It cannot be energy. What, what can it be? Ether. Here we go. Somebody is, uh... right? M, what does M stand for? That's not mass. Money? Market? Monero, I like that. <laughs> That's good. Anybody else? What's going to make Ether worth a lot of money? If you want Ether to go back to new highs, we need a lot of what? Yeah, members, right? Mass adoption, I'll take that too. And C squared, so we have two Cs there, right, for the ones of us who actually know math. C squared. What do we need? If we have, if we are, if we, if Ethereum is is members times what? So that that's where you can plug in your your idea, right? Every one of you can plug in your idea and see if it works, right? For us, for Celsius, it's community credit. We think credit is the key to bring the next billion people into crypto. Why? In the United States, we all have multiple credit cards, and we, have, uh, we can easily get a loan from the bank, but the rest of the world doesn't work that way. More than 7 billion people on this planet don't have any credit card or any bank account, right? Or they're underbanked. So the opportunity to really create a lot of value on the, uh, on the crypto platform is to bring many, many members into the Ethereum community. Anyone knows what this is? A wallet, that's right. So this is a Ethereum wallet. Anyone knows what this number is? That's almost a Google. A Google is one uh, uh, followed by a hundred zeros. That is the number of permutation that any one of these addresses has. So when you're talking about security and you're talking about how hard it is to break this stuff, that's the number. That's how hard it is. If you put all the computers in the world together, I'm not sure you'll be able to break that number. So we had three waves of innovation. We had the infrastructure wave, we have the, the middleware wave, and now we have the dApps wave. We believe that the dApps are the big winners. Uh, Facebook, Google, all those companies are dApps. And just like the dApps dominate the internet, the dApps are gonna dominate the crypto platforms. So think of crypto as like a fishy, as a, as a Pac-Man, right? Pac-Man just is always hungry, and Pac-Man is gonna go up and eat all the assets in the world. It, sometimes Pac-Man gets beat up, like right now, 
but it's coming back and it's hungry again, right? The, the, the competition is between e euros and dollars and yens that the governments are printing endlessly and something that has a finite capacity, finite number of uh, coins. So we believe, we are a big believer that, that crypto is here to stay, crypto is here to dominate. And, you know, I think it's, it's, uh, it will have ups and downs, but it will definitely win out. Who's the guy in the middle? It's a conf it's a it's not splinter. It's a crypto conference. Satoshi guys, come on, Satoshi. Satoshi Satoshi brought us out, right? Satoshi showed us the way. I think Satoshi's a female, but I couldn't find a, a really funny animal for. But uh, what happened was that now we all outgrown. We we've grown up, right? All of, all of the players in the market. So Bitcoin is not necessarily uh, going to be the winner. The, 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 the coin that's going to rule them all is going to, it may not even been created yet. So when you're thinking about this industry, you have to be really pay attention to all of the stuff that's happening. So in my view, the biggest problem we're having, and that's what Celsius focused on, is that we had the, uh, the Bitcoin wave, we had the Ethereum wave, but now we're stuck in a chasm. We don't, we cannot get through this mass adoption uh, wh which we need to really make uh, crypto a, a mainstream uh, application. And, and to cross this chasm, we need things that our people can actually use. Anyone here can use their Bitcoin or Ether to, for daily life? Or you just all spec... Oh, you guys must be speculators, right? How many self-admitted speculators in the room? I'm raising my hand. Here we go. You see? We got, we got enough. We figure out who the rest of the crowd is. So... The point is right now it's mostly speculators with a lot of tattoos. No, just kidding. And, and what we need is a, we need the next 100 million, 200 million people who are coming in for a specific reason. They want a loan, they want to earn interest, they want to do something that they can use in their daily lives. So this is just a comparison of what we do versus what the other guys do. So again, when you focus on the community, you charge less than half of everybody else. Why? Because you're doing it for the community. You're not doing it for profit. Our system is based on token generation, token uh, economics. It's all about how much token usage we can get out of the platform. Because when you have high token usage, you're going to get uh, high adoption. So again, we our focus is the next hundred million people. If we bring any any number of this of these users, obviously the price of coins will go up as well. Because as these users come in and start using it. ETH and Bitcoin, everybody will benefit as well. As the inventor of VoIP, how many people use voice over IP every day? Ah, finally we got everybody's hand up. A billion people use it every day. A billion. Okay, so when we're talking about 100 million, you know, that's actually, I have to break my neck, my, my previous record, right? So I'm, I, I think we can get several billion people on into this platform. I'm going to skip a few slides because we're running out of time. So this is an important slide. So, so I invested in uh, probably like 30 or 40 different ICOs and, and 200 v uh, other companies, you know, uh, uh, as a VC or as an angel. And these are like the most important points that I use to, to decide if a company is a good project or a bad project. Obviously, the management team, uh, again, does the token live on the blockchain, right? We talked about that. It's a very important piece of it. Uh, it needs a broad, need global and uh, broad consensus, right? And most projects don't need that. So you really need to pay attention to that one. Strong investor endorsement. And the token economics create a new economy. Those, that's those three circles. If you create a new economy, you have a good project. If not, move on. So P2P, anyone knows what P2P stands for? I'll give you a little clue here. It's not peer, it's not peer to peer. No, it's a crypto conference. Part of the people, all right? So crypto is all about the people. It's about taking the power from the guys at the top of the pyramid and giving it back to the people. If you're not creating value for the user, if you're not replacing the token collector with something that's for the user, you're in the wrong place. This is a simple diagram of how stuff works. Just kidding. That's, it's a complicated stuff, okay? This is technically and from an execution standpoint, you have to constantly reinvent stuff to make it work. 
And three things you have to remember, VoIP to MoIP, okay? Voice over IP is the largest distributed application that exists today on the internet. Uh, MoIP is gonna be the same thing, money over IP. E equals MC square, we talked about that, and P2P, and I have two seconds, look at that. The reason for our success, anyone can guess? We're the only company in crypto that has more women than men. Thank you very much. See you outside. All right, Alex Mashinsky, ladies and gentlemen.